next thing about the waste material which is going to be decomposed in the or disposed in the landfills you should know that is the permeability and porosity of the materials so permeability it means how easily it is going to pass the water so if it is passing the water through it very easily so the permeability is very high or if it is somehow resisting the movement of water inside of it that is the kind of low permeability if i give you example the sand particles are very much permeable as compared to the clay particle clay particle have the capacity of holding the water as high as from all the different particles as compared to all the different particles but the permeability on the clay particles is very very low but in the case of sand particle it is having very low water holding capacity but the permeability is very high water can easily go through the sand that is the permeability of the substances then the porosity higher would be the amount of pores available higher would be the water holding capacity lower would be the amount of pores available lower would be the water holding capacity so the hydraulic conductivity of compacted waste is an important physical property so what is the hydraulic conductivity we have already seen that in the soil chapter as well that is very much related with the permeability hydraulic conductivity means the conductivity with respect to hydraulic it means the conductivity of water it means permeability itself if permeability is very high then hydraulic conductivity would be also high if permeability is low so hydraulic conductivity will be also low so this hydraulic uh, the conductivity of the different waste material especially the compacted one that is a very important physical property but again because this is governing the movement of the liquid and gases in the landfill again we don't want to create leachate there that leachate will ultimately harm all the living organisms as well as environment near to that landfill area this permeability depends on the other properties of the solid material include the pore size so higher pore size will lead to the higher permeability lower pore sizes lead to the lower permeability the distribution of pores how it is larger number of pores more permeability lesser number of pores less permeability you can say the surface area of the material higher would be the surface area higher would be the permeability then the porosity of the material as well higher porosity means higher water holding capacity so all these things will ultimately define the permeability and porosity of the different particles present in the solid waste so that is very important characteristic that you have to study before disposing the materials or solid waste in the landfills then if you talk about the porosity how much should be the porosity so porosity represents the amount of voids per unit total volume of the material the porosity of the municipal solid waste varies typically from 0.40 to 0.67 depending on the compaction and composition of the waste so out of 100 the 40% area 67% area should be of the pores or the voids present in the soil or present in the solid waste so this is the recommended range of the porosity of the solid waste municipal solid waste that is varying from the 0.40 to 0.67 which is very very high you can see the next physical characteristics about the things or the solid waste here is the compressibility how much is the compressibility it means how much you can compress the material higher would be the compression you can done higher would be the compressibility lower amount of compression if only you can done that would be having the lower compressibility so it is the degree of physical changes of the suspended solid or filter cake when subjected to pressure so here what will happen higher would be the compressibility so easily you can transport easily you can take the uh, solid waste from one place to another place why because easily you can compress it you can make the larger piles of the waste material just by compressing multiple piles and that will help you to transport in the transport of the solid waste material from one place to another place so that's why the compressibility is another very important factor under the physical characteristic so i hope it is clear to you the next thing that we have to discuss here is the chemical characteristics we have completed the physical characteristics we have seen total of seven physical characteristics start with the density of the material moisture content of the material size of the solid waste calorific value of the solid waste 
then the few parameters that are associated with the landfill disposed material. So here, field capacity we have discussed, permeability and porosity we have discussed, compressibility we have discussed. So that was all about the physical characteristics or related to the physical properties of the solid waste material. Now we have to discuss the chemical properties or chemical characteristics that you have to analyze of the different solid waste material. So knowledge of the classification of chemical compounds and their characteristics is essential for the proper understanding of the behavior of the waste as it moves through the waste management system. So just not knowing about the physical parameters is enough. You have to also study about the chemical parameters of the substances or the solid waste. So it will also help you to govern or to decide what kind of disposal facility, transport vehicle, and the treatment facilities you should use to that particular type of waste. So the very first characteristics that we have to study here, that is the ultimate analysis. What is the ultimate analysis? As in the name itself, you can see, this is what? This is ultimate analysis. It means total analysis. So this ultimate analysis will tell you all details about the elements which are present in that particular solid waste. For example, how much carbon is present? How much hydrogen is present? How much oxygen is present? How much nitrogen is present? So that all detail, how much micronutrients are present, that is known by the help of ultimate analysis. This refers to oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and it is done to perform mass balance calculation for a chemical or thermal processes. Suppose you want to do any chemical treatment or thermal treatment of your solid waste. So everything should be in limit. There should be no flammable material present in the solid waste. There should be no toxic metals present in the solid waste. Otherwise, the chemical treatment as well as the deposition. What kind of deposition? The kind of thermal deposition you cannot do. So for that, the ultimate analysis is very, very important. Besides, it is necessary to determine as friction because of its potentially harmful environmental effects. Suppose you are just burning the materials off have to decompose it at any particular place because you cannot just burn the S as well. So on that scenario, the S's are very, play a very important role here and that will also help you to do the ultimate analysis. So because the ultimate analysis is done in the S material. In the S material, you have to analyze what the material is. Otherwise, there would be very high contamination can be done with the, with the left amount of S of that material. So one should note that other metals, for example, iron, magnesium, etc., may also be present, but they are non-toxic. There would be no any kind of harmful effect to the environment by these different things. So that is the ultimate analysis of the solid waste material. So that is the first chemical characteristic that we have discussed. The next chemical characteristic that we have to discuss here is the uh, same thing in the table. So the element carbon you can find out in the municipal solid waste that is 25 to 30 percent, hydrogen 2.5 to 6 percent, oxygen 15 to 30 percent, nitrogen 0.25 to 1.2 percent, sulfur 0.0 to 0.12 percent, and remaining all the materials are present in the S content, including the micronutrients. Typical range of the materials you can find out in the solid waste material. So very important table in the terms of exam perspective. After ultimate analysis, the next chemical analysis that we have to do, there was a network problem by my side. Again, coming back to the topic, that is the chemical analysis. In chemical analysis, we have already studied the ultimate analysis. The next thing that we have to discuss, we were discussing, that was the proximate analysis. In proximate analysis, we have the all four categories here, moisture content of the solid waste, S content generated by the solid waste, volatile matters present in the solid waste, and the fixed carbon content present in the solid waste. So this is important in evaluating the combustion properties of the waste. So proximate analysis is done to know how much the combustion can be takes place in your solid wastage, or whether you can create the refused derived fuel or not. 
this is rdf refused derived fuel the rdf is generated from the municipal solid waste the rdf is used for the energy generation it means that rdf you will take you will burn it in the place of coal and you will get electricity so this rdf should be in non toxic range that is the first requirement and if you are knowing the combustion property of the solid waste then only you can decide that whether the rdf can be made from that solid waste or not so that is what a refused derived fuel is in the very detail we will see the rdf making process in the same upcoming slides here under the proximate analysis there are the following fractions that we have to discuss the very first fraction is the moisture content that we have seen in the physical characteristic as well but here also it is very important to know the combustion property of the waste so this moisture content adds weight to the waste without increasing its heating value that we already know although it will reduce its heating value by just energy requirement by the water to evaporate and the evaporation of water reduces the heat released from the fuel that we have already seen that is the first thing that you should know in the case of proximate analysis then as content so the as content also adding weight without generating any heat during the combustion more would be the as content in the uh, type of fuel that you are using less would be energy you will get for example the pit coal pit coal have very high amount of moisture very high amount of the as content that's why the energy you will get from the pit coal is very very less then in the case of anthracite bituminous coal or lignite coal especially the anthracite and bituminous are very high quality coal and where you will get very high amount of energy because of the low amount of as present there and very low amount of water or the water vapor present there so that is why the as analysis is very important in the proximate analysis then volatile matter analysis so that portion of the waste that is covered that is converted to the gases before and during the combustion process that is also not providing you any kind of energy your matter is just converted to the gaseous form and that is in the room temperature so that is the feature of the volatile matter so that volatile matter which is present in the waste that is of no use so that is also the amount of the volatile matter is very important here then fixed carbon so fixed carbon represents the carbon remaining on the surface grades as charcoal these are known as the fixed carbon so suppose if you are burning a wood so after burning a wood you will get a charcoal so that charcoal is the surface grades and which is called as charcoal you can say a waste or fuel with a high proportion of fixed carbon requires a longer retention time on the furnace grades to achieve complete combustion that a waste or fuel with a low proportion of fixed carbon so higher would be the fixed carbon so that means higher would be the energy you will get that we have already seen in the coal types as well in the all coal types the anthracite have the highest calorific value as well as fixed carbon content that's why the highest amount of energy you will get there the lowest is observed in the pit coal where the fixed carbon content is not very high so that is about the fixed carbon present in your sample as well as the proximate analysis of your whole solid waste so i hope the proximate analysis is clear to you the value of the proximate analysis that you have to remember in the typical municipal solid waste is presented here here are the components the moisture content should be in the range of 15 to 40 more than 50% moisture content you, it is not recommended to are just burning that material there so that will consume a lots of energy there then volatile matter can be in the range of 40 to 60% should be not less than that or not more than that fixed carbon content should be in the range of 5 to 12% and all the other materials for example glass metals as content that should be in the range of 15 to 30% only so this is what the proximate analysis of municipal solid waste tells I hope it is clear to you.